community to help everyone. I'm going to tell you the story of what happened that day. October 29, 2012, uh, to me and to so many people on the island, it's like September 11, before and after. Before you have everything house, business, cause, everything. After, zero. The day of October 29 went as follows. Uh, we've been here for a week, leave the house, you know, it's gonna be bad, the area. Well, we didn't trust them that day. Something was inside me, don't leave, don't go. I don't know what was that voice. Because the year before it, Irene went hit, we left to a hotel in New Jersey, and that hotel was flooded, so we said we're going to stay. Uh, I started receiving phone calls from families from uh, California, from everywhere. You have to leave, it's going to be bad. I refused, I said, no, I'm not leaving. I live with my mom and my nephew. Uh, my mom, her, her hearing is not that good. But that day, God used her. Around 8.14 in the evening, all of a sudden my mom heard something. Uh, she started walking toward the front door and she said, the water is coming. In Arabic, basically. So I ran to her and I looked where she was looking and I see a big <coughs> wave, about 40 feet high, maybe 30 feet. Between that much, but the thing is we saw cars on top of it. It's like Titanic scene, uh, people tumbling on top of the wave and screaming, uh, those transformers, uh, the electricity were exploding in the street. Uh, I said, wow. Immediately I jumped on the circuit breaker in the house, which was like in the same room, I got into it, shut it down. By the time I did that, I came where my mom was, six, seven feet water inside the house. My mom started going underwater. Immediately, my nephew was the next room. He, the word, he has a bunker bed. So he came in, he said, we're gonna die. He said, nobody's gonna die. Uh, it's like, I was assured. So while my mom was going underwater, I swam in the water. I dived in it, and I took extension cord, orange, you know, those extension cords. I wrapped my mom from her arms, and her arms, I lift her up. Uh, my nephew, you know, was panicking, basically like every everybody else. So we opened the door. I look at the second floor. My neighbors, can we come to you? They said, come in. So we swam in that water, cold water. Uh, I put everybody on the second floor. Everybody means uh, my mom, my nephew. And I came down. I came down because I started hearing people screaming, help, help, help. So I started pulling people in. Not realizing, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm a guest in that house, you know, the second floor, but, you know, I said, let me do whatever God wants me to do. So I pulled people, about 16 of them. The last one was like five, 10 minutes later. I was on the second floor and I heard help. So I opened the, the balcony. I said, well, are you okay? She said, no, I'm not okay. So she was basically holding to my van and she was going in and out of the water. Uh, I said, if I throw a cable, would you catch it? She said, yes. So I went down in the water, knowing nothing about swimming, by the way. I, I don't know how to swim. And that time I didn't even think about it. I went in the water. Uh, so she was holding to the van, all of a sudden, another wave came in and took her. And I was looking for her and I saw her, she holding to a small tree in front of the house. So that time, electric cable came down. I said, now I'm gonna die. So basically, God was walking at the same time, you know, with me. And that extension cord was thrown to her and came on her neck and I pulled her in. That night, that lady, she was going nuts. She was freaking out. And basically everybody was like, like because of her, you know, they couldn't because everybody crying and all that. So I reached to her, I said, Mariam, I saved you tonight. I think I'm gonna throw you in the water. And she was like, no, please. So she calmed down right away. She, she had that idea, she was freaking out. So she calmed down. All night we, I did not sleep.
because I wanted to, you know, to protect everyone in that room. Um, I couldn't get to my dog. I have a German Shepherd, his name is Samson. When we swung to the house, I'm like, I couldn't get to him because the electric cables were in the water. But God is amazing. So all night I was talking to him. He was in his room. He kept swimming all night. Uh, Daddy, you okay? He was like, I'm okay. So he opened uh, basically uh, an opening in the ceiling and he kept breathing and he kept swimming. So he was answering me when I was talking to him. In the morning he wasn't answering, around 10.30 or 11 o'clock. So that's almost 15 hours later. So when I didn't hear his voice, I jumped in the water and I went to him. And when I opened that dog, he was the most happiest dog ever. <laughs> He's like, don't leave me anymore, you know? And I felt the guilt, you know, by leaving him. But I, I didn't have any chance because of the electric cable. It was October 29th was, was Monday. So Tuesday when I, I got my dog, I was like, is it really normal for me to lose my house? My business was inside the house, electronics. My cars, I saw them floating. And exactly the same voice because, you know, the one, do not leave, the same voice, yes. You lost it. Uh, my mom, and my nephew, they went by a boat and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the same feeling, homeless in the street, you know, like doing nothing. Like lost it, you know, the way it is, lost, was, we, we were lost. And for the first time, I, you know, I saw, I saw Staten Island or New York as a third world country. I'm sorry to say it, but that's how it was, you know, the recovery was really slow. I said, God, I want to pay you back. I'm not a person, you know, like to take and not give. Because you said my life, my mom's life, my nephew's life, my dog's life, four people, you know, and 16 other people were saved. Uh, the answer was Saturday. Saturday, my niece called me from the city. She said, uh, I have some stuff. What do you need? Because, you know, me and my friends, we collected. She said, all I need is sweatpants and socks. So she showed up in a police inspection, inspector bus, big uh, bus, and she gave me the stuff. I said, where are you going with that stuff? She said, well, Miller Field, it's where, I said, no, Midland Avenue, where, where people lost their lives, you know, we saw that evening. So she said, okay, what do you want? I said, let's give it here. So we start giving it away to people. After a few hours, you know, she got tired, she wants to go. She said, here, take this, and we go in. I said, okay. So he took it, put it in my backyard, where I still call it backyard, but the house was gone. I put it there. I stopped that night my, but by my brother's house. Exactly the same voice. The one said, do not leave, and just get over it. He told me, go give it away to the people. I said, okay, go give away the, you know, the people the stuff. So 5.30 in the morning, I woke up, I took the stuff where they were in my backyard, and I opened the table in, in the corner. I started giving them away. People uh, start driving from Washington, D.C., from uh, Maryland, from Pennsylvania. I had a dance fest with a big truck. Uh, are you the recovery center here? I never do, you know, heard that word, the recovery center. I said, no, I'm a half table man right here. <laughs> really, that's how much stuff. The half table man that day, hundreds of volunteers showed up because it was Sunday, and that Sunday is supposed to be the, the marathon, which they canceled it. So all the volunteers, you know, all the runners came and helped. All day I was saying that, not realizing the hundreds of volunteers, not realizing 23 tables were open. So one volunteer said, Amen, you're not the half table, you're 23 table. I said, Praise God, he's amazing. I thought I was going to do it for one week, two weeks, you know, the max, that's it. And we get over with it. But Jesus was ahead of me. He was planning everything, and I didn't know. I knew it when in January, a young group from Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken, 
One girl, she said, let me pray for you. I said, okay. She's 13 years old, she's gonna pray for me. Said, okay, she prayed for me and you know, that night, you know, I was seeing the whole picture. God is planning the whole thing, what's going to happen. So I kept doing it. And I had so many obstacles. Uh, because when you do God work, you know, they say that it's going to use everything against you. So a city came on me, they want to close me down. I said, why? Because I'm helping the community. No, we're worried about you, you know, it's too cold. I said, just build my house if you are worried. We're almost 17 months later now, and we didn't even build one home. If it wasn't for the volunteers, for hands and feet, for all these organizations, nothing would be done. The first 40-something days, the first two weeks, I stayed at my brother's house. After that, I stayed uh, in a tent. I lived in a tent for over uh, 40 days. Uh, I did it because the need was high. The people were coming in the middle of the night. They want to make phone calls, they want to get water, they want to get anything. So I was providing everything. After that, you know, a lady asked me, Amen, you're entitled for a hotel. I said, how? I said, Fima, they, they could put you in a hotel. So I was put in a hotel for a year. But again, with that, I was helping the community, providing hot food, supplies, everything. We were at one time at the beginning, for the first six weeks, we were 200 feet stretch. That's how much stuff we had, 20, 30 truckloads every day coming in and out to the people. We were serving between three and 4,000 people in the community. And I say to myself, if God didn't do this, what would what would have done? So, so it was something. We kept doing it. The need was high. Uh, 17 months later, the need is still high because a lot of people left their houses and they have no homes to return to, you know, including myself, but God is going to plan something for me and I'm pretty sure. Uh, I had a story too. One, uh, one time, actually I put a lot of homeless people, I used to find them in the streets, in the backyards, so we used to send them to hotel. And one of the biggest case I worked on was one, one of my neighbors came to me one night. She said, hey man, you have to help these two couples. Uh, their brother and sister, they're uh, mentally, mentally challenged. So I sat with them for over an hour to know what their story is. They basically, they were renters. Uh, FEMA give them money for whatever they lost in the house, uh, maybe $12,000. So they went to the hotel and they rent a hotel for the next six months and they spent the $12,000. And they have nothing and they, they start to be homeless for two weeks. <coughs> These people didn't know they are entitled for rental, for rental assistance. So the same night, I was able to hook them up with, with the hotel. And then after that, FEMA returned them whatever money they lost. This is one of, you know, the biggest story we, we did. And so many homeless, almost every day they walked to, you know, it's... The hub became like a lighthouse in the community. If I'm not there, people will come and they will look. I always say, this is God's place, you know, it's... In that door, so many people came. Not just to get food. It's not. It's not the supply. It's. It's God's present. Yesterday, God showed me. You know, He was there. We had a truckload of uh, of drinks. You know, a friend of mine. His name is Joe. So he unloaded everything with all hands, uh, volunteers. Uh, and toward the end, the last ten seconds, all of a sudden, I'm standing here and I see the truck moving with the speed of like maybe 30 miles backing up and there were volunteers in the back so God was there to save them and I, I screamed and then all of a sudden the brake was instead of hitting the brake him he hit the gas and he went back so I said thanks God for that he saved them uh, I don't know what else to say if anybody has any questions I really I will answer
can we how can we help? How can we how can we what can we put together? What can we bring you? Do you need a, some unskilled volunteers? <laughs> Hands and feet are great. they've been amazing to our community. They've been doing a lot every week. You know, almost every week. And uh, I have I have two people now, they really need help. One lady, we call her the cat lady, I'm sorry to say it, but she can let 70, 80 cats in the house. Yes, she has no water, no running water in the house. I deliver water to her every day. And another lady, she couldn't be in the house because her first floor is not done and she's allergic. So if we could fit something for those, that would be great. And uh, we really need some, some help. Even though yesterday I was talking to uh, All Hands uh, volunteers and uh, some organization, I'm not going to mention names, they said, no, we don't need uh, any more uh, people here. Why? The number is going down and, and down and it's fading. It's not fading. People have no home to return to. People walked away from their homes. Oh, I didn't mention this. That, that apartment, the second floor, was available for me after one year, so I rented. And uh, I was like, wow, I didn't believe, you know, it's the same apartment I was saved, and those people, the 16 people were saved, it was available for me to be rented. So praise God for that. Volunteers, we need them. And I want to thank Sri and uh, the, fam the two families are hurry came you know, in the cold, cold days for Thanksgiving. Hands and Feet Ministry, they've been, you know, one of my strength. When I'm weak, when I'm like, Chris, I need a prayer. And he's been the one going strong. And he's been the one who's holding hands and feet with Brian and the rest of the group. They're really, they're really good at it. They're, you know, it's, it, they're driven by God. There's no agenda there, you know. What's agenda? People are putting for their, you know, effort and they go out there just to heal those souls. It's not the supply, it's not it's not fixing, it's these people when you touch one person, that person is gonna touch five others, and five other, you know, twenty-five, and it will multiply. And that's that's what brings people to to realize that there is God out there. There's there's a stronger power, there's not nature power, there's God. That's, that's what we've been doing. You know, we want to spread the world. Can you tell us what it's like in your daily activities? Yeah. What, do, what is it like for a day? I woke up with no nothing. Like you see, there's nothing. And God planning everything. I'm going to say how I bought the car. And Nelly will be witness for that. Uh, I have nothing. I don't schedule nothing for the day. Maybe I will schedule for an event, like next week we're going to have barbecue. I don't know where the meat is going to come from, but I'm not afraid because I know God will provide the last minute. Daily routine, I woke up. First, first of all, I woke up 2 o'clock in the morning. I go on Facebook, I see who's broken wings. There is a lot of people, you know, from our community. <coughs> they go into depression. Between two and four, that's the time, you know, I want to kill myself, I don't know what to do with myself. So I try my best, you know, to calm them down, because that's the time they need to be healed. After that, I sleep for uh, seven o'clock, and then we I go, I pick up my assistant, the one she, she works in the hub. Actually, Nelly is my, my, my partner in crime in that. <laughs> I didn't mention her name, but Without her, God sent her the first month to help me. And for the last 16 months, she was she was there every day with a prayer, with everything. So we start the morning breakfast. We come back. Uh, for the last three months, uh, we have no heat in in the place. Uh, nothing, no heat. So we turn on the firewood in the front of the hut every morning. It's been it's been our routine. And uh, I put soup, I make soup every day. And I don't know where the meat comes from too. Sometimes, you know, just open cans and then I see somebody walking with the turkey here, take the turkey. So 
every day we make soup and then we wait for launch and uh, the launch comes from two locations comes from uh, project hospitality and it comes from another person now who's been cooking four trays we've been sending volunteers thanks god for because the second person he he was able to to give us stuff uh, after that after launch 12 30 1 o'clock <coughs> we start seeing more people coming in. So we provide, in the hub, we provide food, clothing, baby supplies, and most of the time it's great. You know, people need needs that, needs their soul to be healed. And we close around three o'clock because it's cold, and sometimes we stay longer if it's warm day. After that, uh, I see the hotel. And I forgot to tell you, I, because we have, we have people now. So I start serving God between another situation and sending a hot meal. I, I drive them myself to, to families who need them, you know, special senior citizen. And that's, that's who was hurt in our community. They lost their lives, most of them. The, you know, like the total numbers of the, who lost their lives, there were seniors and disabled. So I want to focus on them, I wanna, because they have nobody. To, to send them food. So I have already about four of them. I send food. I deliver them. And uh, I'm planning on more. So hopefully the relief center where where I am now in a couple months, let's hope I'm gonna I'm gonna build. I'm gonna start building. And I'm planning on uh, to be a relief. The first part, I'm planning on a relief center and a church too, because that community needs it. I asked you for Chris. I need you for the concrete. And he said, "I'm going to be there." I'm going to tell you about how how I purchased the vehicle. It's not the money. How I put the money because God was, you know, I still owe. It's okay. Uh, how I purchased the vehicle. Monday morning was President Day. I woke up, I said, I'm gonna buy the vehicle. I know. It's like I'm sure of it. <clears throat> I opened the computer, I saw a vehicle at the Honda dealer. One mile away, one, one and a half mile away from where I am. I saw a car, I like okay. two hours later I called Geico Insurance. I said, How much is it insurance? Because for the last 17 months I had no car, you know. I, I had so many of them, six, seven of them, you know, before. I wasn't rich, but I like cars. So they, they stopped walking me, you know, they, they checked my driver license, you know, there's no point, nothing for the last 20 something years. Uh, they said, uh, they give me a call, they, you know, would you like full cover? I said, yeah, full cover. And then though at the end, they said, do you have the vehicle? I said, no. I mean, how how you gonna? I said, but I like to buy the insurance. You know, if it's cheap now, and you know, we'll see. I said, hey, if you want to buy, you know, we need a VIN number. You know, how how you gonna? You know, I said, okay, here you go. So I opened the computer. I give them a VIN number from the computer. I just saw it. You know, I did it. Nelly will will. So we went to the dealer, the Honda dealer. I spent. Another two hours, you know how they are, you know, they, they're gonna walk you through. So I liked one car. I said, that's a car, you know, I like it. So okay, we start closing the deal. So the salesman, uh, we, I, I got him the, the, you know, the travel, you know, the check, whatever. He said, you need insurance, you, you need to purchase insurance. I said, well, I just purchased insurance this morning. And he was like, come on, you purchased from who? I said, from Geico. He said, but you need a VIN number. I said, well, I give him any VIN number. He said, just tell me what's the VIN number. I said the VIN number. It came to the same vehicle. And Nelly was like, wow. And the guy was like, I couldn't believe it. How, how, how did you do that? I said, God was walking two steps ahead of me that day. He did it. He did it. And we, we drove that car the same day. And I'm here just to tell you what God you know, plans for everyone. You know, he knows what you're going to do tomorrow or the day after. But we don't. We don't. But maybe he'll give us clues. That's why we have to to give so much faith to God, and to Him is the glory. I'm not a preacher. I'm not. 
I'm not passive, but you know what? I've seen so many miracles there. I've seen a miracle when we have no food. I say, just put the the thing on, you know. The, they said, why? We have no food. I said, just put them on. Two minutes later, somebody walks with the trays of food. They said, are you crazy? What's going on? They think, you know, I'm like, no, but God is, you know, preparing. You know, when you need something, God, God is the provider. When, I'm not. <coughs> one, 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 one person told me, how do you do all that? You know, I said, really, I'm not doing it. I'm just witnessing. I'm just here to see what God is doing in the whole, the whole area. And, and in the relief center, and that's what. That's what's going to Tell us about next Saturday. Next Saturday, I have an event. I say, you know, after after a hard winter we had and cold winter, I said I want to bring the community together <coughs> by doing a barbecue. So there is a walk on. Uh, it's it's a 29. It's going to be. So there is a walk for the Sandy people. I said after that I want to do barbecue. I want to want to have something. Um, let's hope you know we'll do it. That's gonna be right at the hub where you're at. It's gonna be in the front. Yeah, it's gonna be in the street basically. And you need a couple hundred pounds of meat. You get that. <laughs> Any specific meat in general? Pasta. You like pasta? <laughs> 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 So we did we did an event and that was very successful uh, to bless the animals. So I brought Catholics, I brought Protestant, you know, and eventually. So all of them we prayed, and that was one more miracle I'm going to tell you too. So we brought uh, Fordham University uh, give us about five hundred dollars of food. They bought for us the pet supply. Yeah, it was coming the whole day, you know, like one shot. It's everything. Whatever we put out there, people want it. There was a dog, her name is Dolly. It was hot dog, you know, they call the small one. So basically because they jump and all that, so she was kind of like that dog. Yeah. So, so the Catholic priest prayed on her, and then uh, my friend, Pastor David Hill, he prayed on her, and there was another Catholic uh, priest prayed on her. So two against one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. We're all one, one God, one Jesus. So, so I said, what is this? You know, this dog needs something. So I donated a hundred dollars, and another person donated a hundred dollars, and we bought a wheelchair for that dog. After about three months, that dog started walking. We couldn't believe it. We could not believe it. So that was one of the. We've been using a lot of technology. Facebook been really very helpful. From the beginning, after one week uh, from the hurricane, I opened Midland Have neighborhood relief face Facebook, and from that time, <coughs> people, I need this, or you know, from that relief, we need water. We see you know truckloads coming, you know, that doesn't show up anymore, you know, because after two months they thought we were back to normal, and uh, that's what's going on. My mom works for IFAW, which is the International Fund of Animal Welfare. I guarantee you, if I talk to her, they can make a huge donation of food for... And I work with them all. In Massachusetts? <laughs> <laughs> Serving on Saturday at the 
those two families, amazing. <laughs> Thanksgiving Day, they came at 6.30 in the morning. Ray, stop texting me. I'm outside. I'm like, okay. <laughs> because I'm next door. So I walk down. We're freezing. We have no heater. So let's let's plan, you know, the fireworks. So we planned it for an hour, an hour and a half. And that day a lot of people showed up. You're so humble. <coughs> Even Red Course, they're not my favorite, but they showed up. Because they probably paid for some of the food, so they want to show, you know, pictures and all that. That was a miracle Thanksgiving. I uh, I planned that day to surf for three days and we did it. Uh, I planned to surf twenty five hundred meals. But we served total was 3,400 meals in, in three days. Because it's, I said, we're not going to do it for one day and then forget. Thanksgiving should be every day. So I said, you know, three days we're going to do it. And we sent a lot of food. And we did the same for Christmas. And we sent a lot. But this, these two families, they were there. <laughs> they were there. And they get hungry toward the end because we forget to eat. I said, no, you're not going to McDonald's, we're going to eat here. <laughs> She's still mad. <laughs> They're still, they still mad. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll take you in anytime. It, it's God's place, really. It's not my place. It's not Amen's place. No. When I saw my name, I said, it's, it's God's. You know, it's not to replace me, but that's what God's doing the work. I'm, I'm just like everybody else. I don't have feather in my hair. And uh, my community needs a lot. They need to be healed. They, we have a lot of broken hearts. They don't trust what's going on, you know, because they start losing faith. So many promises, city saying this, state saying that, but uh, nothing has been done. Only the things that's been done is by the volunteers. And they're not protecting us from the water because if the water jump again, it's going to do it again. The houses didn't lift up. The houses right there, they fixed them, you know, 50% of the people fixed and they went back. But that's not that, that's not the solution. The solution is lift up or if the government wants to do a wall on the, in the sea, let them do it. But they just put sands on the sea, which if, if another wave comes in, the sands will go in, into our sewer system and lock it for a good time. We really need help. Oh, the community needs help. And I want to help this community too. If I can. You know. Serious. It's not about me, me, me. It's about all of us. Uh, back in May, May 20 something, May 20, when tornado happened, it was like, I wanted to go, you know, like, so for five days, how it's going to happen? People were, okay, I'm going to give you a truck, I'm going to pay you for a truck. Nothing happened. So I went to uh, Enterprise, rented a van, loaded up with uh, supplies. Even a generator was was donated by Pastor Mike uh, Caruso. And I drove. I took two volunteers, one of them from Staten Island, the second one from Ohio. And I drove about 36 hours, 35 hours to uh, to Oklahoma, and I know hands and feet went there too. No, Colorado was it? Oh, it was Oklahoma. You went? Both of you were there. So, so I did. I did go there. I said, let me, let me choose which area God will put me in because I want to help who cannot get help. So God put me in Shawnee, and that's the tribe. Uh, it's Indian tribe, and they were getting no help. So I went in. I gave them the supplies give them the generator, and I start delivering in, in that area from home to home. And you should see, people have no homes complete. The house, the whole house, it's 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 like split, splinters. You see splinters, that's how they put them. Less than this, the whole house, and they turn it on fire. So we were able, for, for five days I stayed over there, and I came back because I couldn't leave the relief center by itself. But there were people running it. Uh, after I came back, I said, wow, these, all these disasters happen here and there, you know, why God doesn't stop it? But it's, it's a nature, you know, things will happen and will change. 
When we born, you know, we born maybe some people will uh, will live for one day, some people will live for 99 years. And that's what happened. We cannot blame God for disasters. God wants to change things, but change it to the good things. Because out of negative, you should see all the positive comes out of it. Special, special our hurricane Sandy. It's amazing. It brought a lot of people together. Neighbors couldn't talk to neighbor. You know, they want to kill each other. They stop talking. So it's good, it's good, positive. But there is something in the I'm not going to talk about it, which I try to ignore it all the time. <sighs> so we did, I did Oklahoma. When hands and feet uh, decided to go to Colorado, thanks God, we were able to give them some uh, little bit supplies. Uh, I outreached to, uh, to the flood in upstate New York. There was a big flood. Uh, I drove there with Pastor David Hill, full van of stuff, supplies. When I got there, they were like confused what's going on. The cop didn't know. The Red Cross was, was in, a, in a school doing nothing. So we started delivering supplies to homeowners. And then I, I found a cop over there. I said, hey, take the supply and start doing it. I said, can I do that? I said, yeah, you get it paid, don't you? I said, yes. I said, okay, you can do it. So he did it. And we came back because we had to come back because I didn't want to stay, you know, overnight. So we did that. Philippine, when it happened, I was like, okay, I, like, I don't know what to do. Then all of a sudden, I see a person, his name Joey Arenas, I think. He put on Facebook, he's from the Philippines, and his, you know, his heart was hurt because of the Philippines, and he started collecting stuff. So I connect with him on Facebook. I said, somebody today just dropped me 500 bucks of chicken bullions. Would you like? Chicken bullions, you know, it was like those, they, they, they make really nice soup. I said, I would love to. So he came and I gave it to him and he sent it to the Philippines. We've been helping Syria. Syria were my home. Uh, people are losing their lives every day over there. Just some of them because they are Christian and they don't want to change it to another religion. So they, they get it beheaded for no reason. Uh, we, we, we helped through a lady through South Jersey. We, we sent two containers already and then a third container is going. All they needed is supply and little cans and you know, here and there, some wheelchairs. We help, you know, we can help now. So I became I became like, somebody needs something, I'll like bug it myself, you know, I gotta be there. But basically, you know, it's, it's God's doing it. Because I wanna help. One person told me, you cannot do all of that. I said, God is doing it, and I cannot do it, of course. But, you know, if you stretch your, your arms to be a wings, you could cover a long area. You could cover the whole world if you wanna do. And one person could do a lot. We should, we should believe in ourselves, we should believe. We have so much power, nobody should take it away from you. Because we should not give up. And God will help. When you are a vessel, God will help. He will open doors like no tomorrow. You want to do something? It's right there in front of you. Especially when the car happened, you know, the, the vehicle. I didn't know how it was like God here. And then after that, the second day, a lady, old lady, I need food. I cannot be without food. I said, okay, man. It looks like God tell her, hey, call Amen. He has a beacon now. Use her. So I've been doing So that's the thing. God been planning. It's gonna be big. It's gonna be a long road toward the end. It's not because back in February I had other missionary people. They said, close to your eyes, what do you see? I was like, wow. So I did. I saw a long road and toward the end was like bright light. So I start asking people, what's that? The, the road start wide and then start narrow. They say, oh, you're gonna be, you're gonna be this for the rest of your life. And what you see, the light, that's God. That's, that's, that's his mission. So I said, you know, I'm obeying. I, I cannot say no. It's gonna, whatever God wants me to do, I'll do. I'm not, I'm not gonna weaken for nothing. Even though, you know, for the last 17 months, they've been trying negative stuff. One time, uh, that, not one time, but a few times, 
you know, all cities, agencies, you name it, DOT, health department, fire department, they come to me, you know, we're going to close you down, we're going to say, this is God's place, do it, you'll see what's going to happen. They like, they almost cry and they leave. One time the uh, health department approached me, they say, you sell food here? I said, where's the cash register? So he stopped, okay, I see what you mean. I'm trying to do whatever God wants me to do, and it's, it's his his call it's not my call it never been my call you know only I said I want to pay you back and then he said okay I have I have a long fix for you if you want to pay it back and that's what's been happening Any question? how can we pray for you how can you pray for me for strength for, to open more doors and uh, to plan a, ch a church where I am that's where I want to do and to build that house where a lot of people been coming for the last 17 months just to get anything, not only supplies, you know, to heal those broken hearts. Because some people come just to talk to me. So we don't need nothing, you know, especially the cat lady. She's a person, she doesn't need nothing. She one time donated $100. I was like, no, you need it. I said, no, another person gave it to me and say, just give it to a person, you need it. I said, ma'am, you need it. And she was like, that's strength, more open doors, more to put the community together, because that community really hurt. And I want to help this this church, if I can. You know? Because once, once you are hurt, it's not, you know, sit back and just cry about it. No, just get up on your feet, be positive, and you could you could heal yourself and heal the others around you, and that's what God been doing in our area. You know, and I I want to see this church as big as possible. It's not the number, big in in like activities, you know. But that's the word. you know. I know you'll do activities, and that's I don't know what to say. Let's do this, right?